Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is the 19th 75k tutorial. This one was requested by Swag the Grass Tyson, and it is a bass from the track If You Cry by Spore, which sounds like this. Super duper loud. And then uh, the version I got is this. Kinda? Like, I. My main issue with a lot of these is actually not so much the actual literal sound design, but the articulations used to kind of do what they did. This one was a bit interesting, though, because um, I the way that I, I tried, I, I like to go about it, was in in as a uh, pure synthesis type, kind of thing, as opposed to what you might be thinking about, you might ask. And, uh, man, this multi-pack compressor inside Serum. Although I'm using, like, the original launch version of Zero for all I know that whatever that's doing has been fixed in later updates. But um, the way that it moved, like the way that it, it, it appears to present itself in in the in the song leads me to believe that it's um, either sample based or wavetable based because a certain aspect of how it move how it moves is a little bit like what happens when you pitch something up and down. And that may or may not be exactly how that went went down, but um, Recreating that exactly like that in terms of that uh, technique would mean that I would have to make make the sound and then make a sound that would react that way when pitched, and that's a bit of a that's a lot of foresight and a lot of work, <laughs> which I don't really feel like doing for a seventy five k tutorial. So I like to go about it in a pure synthesis route, but it doesn't mean that we can't still have that kind of behavior. If you were around when I was doing the hardstyle track from scratch, you might have seen how at, at some point I was doing an effect that was similar to what happens when you'd sample a kick, but I didn't sample anything. And this is where we key map filters. So in this, uh, the way this is working is that I have a saw and a square, and they both are super sawing and super squaring, I suppose. Lots of unison, super detail, and that kind of thing. And um, then uh, like they're both going into... A filter, there's also a sub that's going direct out, and then there's um, white noise, uh, bright white noise in the analog folder that I'm key tracking as well, so that it kind of moves, like, when the, whatever it, whatever behavior that it elicits at one particular note, it changes and moves with the note to give it that, that, uh, that like, recorded audio feel. Same thing with the filter. Except for the, um, the filters that I'm using in this one are a, a low pass and a notch combo, and then later on also a low pass and a notch combo. The low passes I'm doing independently because it's this, this essentially, this is going right in the filter. They're all being filtered, and then it's being distorted uh, via the wave shaping uh, distortion mode inside Serum, which is, no, which is nice. Nope, I almost said. I tried to say nice and dope, and I said nope, which is not what I wanted to say. I also have this EQ that I'm doing, with, which is high passing it before the distortion. So there's a, there's still low frequencies kind of being there because of the distortion, but it's mostly you know being taken out, and it kind of it, that's also what's eliciting the smoothness of it. Because if you've ever distorted anything and it gets that kind of rounded, crunchy feeling, that's what happens when you put too much bass into distortion, and you can solve that by removing the low end, or at least you know bringing the low end down relative to the higher frequencies. So that's kind of what this is for. Now I have this little peak here, and I have uh, the the notch filters on each each of the filter types, um, except for the top. The top one is being automated. I'm actually moving that with the low pass, and that was mostly just to ear. It wasn't it wasn't a lot to do with that. And then um, this little peak here, and the high pass. I forgot, forgot about that. And also the notch down here are being key tracked. And I'm I'm doing it I'm doing it like not exactly as you would sampling because the sampling is sort of it moves one to one with how much you're moving it up and down and like you know if you move up if you double if you move up the octave of the sample that means that you're doubling all the frequencies and then whatever anything was at any particular orientation is then moved up you know twice as much but I'm moving it up a little bit more just to elicit more of the direct result and uh, then it was just by your ear centering around the motion and the position so that it still kind of sounded like it was... Because like, you know, in the original sound, you could hear how like the higher notes and the lower notes are a little bit different. I also want to point out that this is the very beginning part. That wah kind of thing, that's actually a different sound layered on top of this. If you listen to the song, you can hear how um, in later, later on, after this is first introduced, there's actually a layer comes in on top of it. And then while it was being introduced, that layer kind of comes in and out and you can hear intro bits uh, of it being um, hit without that in it. I just want to point that out there. And the reason why I'm using the one with that in there is because it's the, one of the clearer moments of it by itself with the rest of it anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah, so like the rhythm and articulation, like I said, I don't necessarily nail, but um, the sound, at least the way that it could be to, could be used, I think I did a pretty good job with. And like um, honestly, it's, since we're using serum, uh, I think you could do to sort of mimic that behavior is instead of doing it like this, just kind of making one sort of modulation of it, recording it, and then importing it as a table. Because then when you have it as a table, it will react like a sample, because it is a sample at that point, which means that it'll the, the sort of the form and D nature of it will move up and down with with whatever nuts you're using. Um, what else? So I have a multi multi band compressor on it, which is, yeah, so it's the filter when it when it's on. When it opens up, I guess. I guess it's not doing it. Multi band compressor does weird stuff after filters. I've discovered in other attempts to do things. Um, yeah, I mean, so let's break this down. So people, people are getting a little bit like the reaction I had for using serum was not what I expected. But um, let's break this down into sort of basic components here. So we have a combo square saw, uh, super saw essentially. I actually initially went went to this with just a square. <laughs> Which kind of did it, but like it didn't have the the right bite to it. I didn't actually think it was a square initially. Like it had square type like feel to it, but if you look at the harmonics, all there were saw type harmonics active, so that was never really a thought. But so a combo of that going into a low pass notch combo, which is basically just saying going into a low pass and then going into a notch. The thing about specific these kinds of filter types is that like a lot of them don't. A lot of them will stack. So like the pass ones versus the cut ones like uh, a low pass or high pass will merge together will merge together fine a band pass and a notch will merge together fine and it says that it doesn't matter what order you put them in they'll work and so a low pass notch is one of those where it doesn't matter what or you could put the, you could put the notch first a low pass first it doesn't matter it'll still come out more or less the same um and that's automated it has a very low resonance and low pass so it's smooth same thing with the one in post here usually if you're using you know resonance High resonance. You get that. It's not necessarily a bad sound, but they get the kind of the smooth motion. I initially thought I was, I mean, given how this is sort of high passed, my initial thought about going after it as a bad pass might have been correct, but um, the motion didn't seem, it was either a very large band pass, like wide band pass, or it was a low pass. So either way, works out. Um, this EQ here is a sort of a high pass that's being note note tracked, your keyboard tracked, note following, and then there's a little peak um, up at I don't know what that is, 500 and something hertz, but it's also being note tracked, so it's not I mean where 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 that is specifically is not that value, but you know just kind of set it to ear that kind of thing, and then it's being distorted, and the, I could have just used the regular tube just normal distortion, but I decided to like, use the, the shaper because I like using FL's wave shaper, and this is essentially literally the same like the same thing, so that's you know, just distortion of some choice. Uh, you'll you'll figure you'll figure out how that works in there, and also sort of adds to the smoothness is to use white noise to kind of be layered in there, but it's very quiet in comparison to the, all the other elements. Um, then it's being filtered again because the distortion is going to cloud up everything. Like even that, even if I didn't have that, that posted there, it gets it. It gives it like you know, it muddies it up. But so we're using the, the filter on top of it to kind of bring it all back. And then the compressor to kind of even out. Even that out, that kind of thing. There's also like pitch slides and stuff going on in the original that I didn't do. And that's because using third party pitch like pitch slides. I could have used um, like the portamento, but that's not really what it did in the song. It actually had like real sliding in between notes, at least in this one kind of section. And it's possible to change it, automate it, and all that kind of stuff, but that just seemed like a necessary amount of work for not really that an important part of the sound um and then yeah that's pretty much it so with that description that i just gave you you should be able to do that with anything because honestly this is like this particular setup is particularly basic saws and squares and filters and distortion you can do that with anything you can do that with recordings of saw waves if you wanted to anyway i'll put up this patch actually i'll put up this flp i suppose sans sample um for you to look at will be in the description of this video, along with the link to the Reddit thread that you should go to if you would like to make a request yourself. Any requests made anywhere else will be ignored. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.